school. Mm. So, but are they all both owned from the same school or are they separate school? They're kind of separate. I mean, like they don't have much funding from Bro One, like okay. the DO okay. school. The yeah. DO is much closer affiliate. I mean, this is still new school, so. Okay, so I think it's nine already. So it's eight and uh, a.m. In, in in Vietnam. So I think we can uh, start. So uh, apparently, there was supposed to be a student from uh, Da Nang uh, who's going to present the case, but I guess um, she's busy, so she can't do it. So I probably have to run the case uh, for her. So. Next, next time, it will be better if we have a student presenting the case um, so that, you know, people can learn from it. Uh, but I guess, you know, she's busy, so I can't really blame her for that. How about we um, run, how about we run the class first and then like to see if like the uh, okay. student come and present the case later. Sure. I, I do feel like it's eight too early, yeah. so I'm not sure like, and then we posted the link kind of late yesterday, so maybe mm -hmm. they did not know. Where to go. Yeah. And where is Hip? Is coming? I don't know. That's a good question. Okay. All right. So I think uh, we can go ahead and introduce ourselves first, um, and then we just wait for me more people to come. All right. So um, bây giờ là là tám giờ bên Việt Nam hay là tụi mình uh, giới thiệu um, sơ sơ một chút. Uh, giống như về bản thân rồi sau đó nhiều người người ta vào thêm. Okay, so we, we can go like you know around and ask introduce ourselves I guess. Um, so Đức Tấm, you want to introduce yourself in, in English? Give it a try. I don't think they can hear me. Can they hear me or no? Yeah, we have some people, we just no one introducing, you know, no one talking. Hello? Okay. Uh, can you? Yeah. Okay. Can you introduce yourself? Yeah. My name is Linh. I am uh, mm -hmm. come from. I am a lecturer in uh, medicine uh, medicine uh, factory mm -hmm. of this university. Yudong University. Do you uh, know it? Oh, uh, can, you, can you say what university again? Yi Tung, Yi Tung. Oh, Yi Tung, Yi Tung. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thành thành phố nào? Like which city? Da Nang city. Oh, Da Nang. So I yeah. I remember. I used to uh, go to um um what's the name? Um, I already forgot the high school, but uh, Yi Tung is right next to uh, Phan Thiết Chân, right? Uh, no. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so you say you're a lecturer. Yeah. Okay. Well, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we can go to the next person. Um, let's say Tân. Uh, hello. I am Hi. Tân. I'm yeah. from Da Nang. Da Nang. Um, okay. Wow. Medical student and medical uh, student in. Uh, Da Nang Medical School. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Medical Student of. Uh, I don't remember my uh, my university <laughs> of okay. my English. Okay, yeah, this is fine. Uh, which which year are you in? Uh, um, now I'm um two. So second year. Yeah, second year. Okay. All right. Welcome. Thank you. All right, that's that's a lot better than the first time. So we have some people talking, so that's good. Um, so let me try to see. Um, all right, all right. I think he is here, so I'm gonna promote him so he can introduce. Uh, Kato, you wanna introduce yourself a little bit? 
Yes. Um, so my name is Tu. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people call me T for simplicity. Americans are correct. Okay, they can't okay. say the whole name. So that's why they go with T. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I cannot pronounce my name correct. Um, okay. I'm mm. uh, 27 years old, I guess. I'm mm -hmm. older than. You didn't have to say your, your age, you know. We don't. We didn't have to make any other. <laughs> no, age. I want to better pronounce just just for fun. Okay. Like, um. So, anyways, I'm an MS one student. Mm -hmm. uh, year one at uh, Cooper Medical School, Brooklyn University. Okay. It's in Camden, New Jersey. Okay. So, yeah. Very close to me. Um, I'm from Boston. Um, so uh, I I'm. I now arriving. I'm, yeah. So. All right, so let's go to HIP, because uh, I think this is the first time that uh, we get to know HIP. Um, so he's just joined as a one of the lecturers uh, in our group. And I know that he's a second year medical student. Uh, so like Sin being Nam Hai, um, so I wanted him to uh, introduce himself a little bit, okay? HIP, you gotta unmute yourself. I can unmute it for you if you want. All right. Go Hi, guys. Hi, uh, my name is HIP Nguyen. I mm -hmm. have been with this day for how long? 11 years. No, like, yeah, 11 years. I have been in United States for 11 years. So I have finished uh, 11 grades in uh, Vietnam. Then I, uh, when I go to uh, United States, I have to re retake ninth grade. Mm -hmm. So I uh, went through an uh, uh, undergraduate with the biochemistry. And um, I have to, you know, like, I have to apply to two time, but like it is very competitive to get into a US medical school. So yeah. I am running in Caribbean school. Mm -hmm. So uh, which uh, Caribbean school? Uh, St. George University. Okay, all right. Okay, well, welcome uh, everyone. So I think we have a few people now so we can start the class. Um, so I think uh, we can try with the lecture first. So uh, this lecture is going to be a less more basic uh, than the the other lectures. So we uh, we try to in, you know include some uh, English and also Vietnamese uh, so that you know people can learn a little bit more. Uh, so I'm going to let uh, Kato uh, uh, or if, um, you want to lead, just open up the PowerPoint and just share your screen. Yeah, I'm hit. Uh, hit will probably start first because mm -hmm. yeah, I'll right. in when it comes to my slide. So, uh, you know, can for you guys, can you guys open the PowerPoint slide for me? I don't, I don't, I don't know how to open the PowerPoint slide from here. Okay, so let me let me do it then. Um, all right. So, so what you do is you, you go to the PowerPoint slide and you just start it and then um, mm -hmm. share screen from the Zoom. Okay. Just okay, so you... Okay, I, 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 think I, know, I know how to do it now. Okay, so the little share screen at the bottom, when you hit share. Okay, I, I know how to do it now, yeah. Right, so okay. here. Yep. Let me go to uh, view, present. All right, so I want everyone to, you know, ask any question at any time, uh, okay? So how many people do we have in this group? So right now we have about, um, so 13 participants, so minus four of us, so there could be nine students. So I guess more people will come in uh, later, but you know, we, we, have, we can post this video online later. Okay, so all right, so. Yeah. So today we will talk about tuberculosis. So I think like you guys can stop me in the middle of my presentation if you don't understand something. Okay? All right? So... Uh, All right, so I want people to, uh, you know, raise your hand. There's a function that's called raise your hand. Uh, if you have any questions, okay? Yeah, see, Duck Dong, he, you raise your hand, so what's up? Hang on, Duck Dong. No, I just I just to try. Okay, you want to try? <laughs> okay, so it worked. Okay, that's good. Okay, All right, sorry, yeah. go ahead here. All right, guys. So for the class structure today, we will um um like yeah, we some some group we will do a presentation on a real case, right? 
Yeah. Then yeah. After, after that group, we will uh, have a lecture, and this lecture is a combination of the uh, medical terminology and some of the uh, medical knowledge in English. And after that, we will have some uh, set one question, yeah. and uh, you uh, and we can answer any question from our audience. Yeah. So the step one question will be mainly for you and Du, um, because you know. <laughs> And there are some people that want to take step one too, so it will be benefit them as well. But this mainly just to prepare up with you both. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Man, I have to twenty twenty to yeah. prepare for that. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you, though. All right, let's go. All right. So, who who are going to do the uh, a real case presentation? Um. So a group in Anang is going to do it, but she's uh she's um busy right now, so uh, she can do it later. All right, so we just go to lecture. All right, we have another raised hand from Duc Tong. Like, what's going on? Yes. Yeah. Hi, Duc. Muốn nói gì vậy? Đã không ạ. Đâu còn nữa hả? Okay. Sao lại tắt cái nút đấy đi ta? Uh, low, low. I can lower it. So, ah. Yeah. So, okay, it's coming. It's coming. You raise, you raise your hand. Oh, and you raise your hand. Okay. Hello. Who who say excuse me? Okay, we have okay. one more. Okay. Uh, I, I, I need to write some word in the slide. It's like I need this me losing uh, and it means uh, I mean uh, I want to write something. Okay, can you uh, slowly? Go? Okay. Yeah. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pronounce these words slowly so you guys can understand and learn it. Okay. I'm gonna pick some people to repeat this word. So this this class is not just you know you use. Just stay and listen, okay? You're gonna have to pronounce some words and say some English, okay? Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna let him try to say it because he's been here for uh, 11 years, so he's probably can say a little bit better than most of you guys. So, what, what do you want me to say? <laughs> try, try to pronounce a word. Uh, so let's say, let's say, let's have them. Then you wanna try the uh, first word? Yeah, I'm yeah, trying. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm finished. Huh? No, try uh, to I'm, pronounce that. Try to just read it. Okay. Uh, Emmy, Emmy Dermy Logic. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, how do you? Good. How, okay. All right. So you know the trick to to um, say English words is to break it down into different parts. So in that word, the three part you can actually break down, uh, so that it can help you a little bit better. Yeah, thank so you. I, th I think, um, uh, Hib, do you, you want to help him out? All right, so epidemiology, right? Yeah. Epidemiology. Yeah, so Epi no, yeah. No, 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 you have to break the word into three parts first. So, first, all right, so, yeah. all right, so you know, for, with the me medical terminology, it's a, a combination of two words or more than two words. So, because the terminology, uh, the medical terminology is come from Greek or Latin. So we have to know a meaning of a, um, a word. Right, for example, right here, right? Epidemiology. So, so do you see my uh, mouse right here? Yeah. yeah. You see? Yes. Yeah. All right. So you, you see the ology, right? Whenever you see the ology, that means I study. Yeah, I, I, I knew it. Yeah. So like, like, like. Biology, right? Biology, that is the study of life, right? Yeah. Um, what, uh, what, um, yeah, like cardiology, right? Cardiology is study of the heart. Yeah, yes. Okay. So, so the thing is, when, when you uh, speak a, a medical uh, word, you cannot just take one word and you just run, you know, with the rest. You have to speak slowly uh, so people can understand you. So, you can start with ology, right? So, you do epi. Demiology. So say it slowly first, and then once you get used okay. to it, it go faster. Okay. So epidemiology. epidemiology. Okay. See how easy that is? Just say slowly. Yeah. So epidemiology. So just break it down. Epidemiology. All right. So I'm gonna have. Um, uh, so Thai Thai Tuan, you wanna s s repeat the word? Or anyone, uh, whoever wanna speak, you know, like practice English, just raise your hand. The first one. Yeah, the first one. Yeah, who who raised your hand? 
Let me raise your hand. Yeah. Uh, Huy An, you want to uh, just pronounce that? Uh, the first one? Yeah. Epi myology. No, so say slowly first, okay? So epi demiology. Epi uh, demiology. So, exactly. So you got to say slowly and then speak a little faster. Uh, so epi demiology. Epi demiology, okay? yes, yes. Yeah. So ology is the last part and epi the first part. So you do epi demiology. So, okay. all right. So we're going to have uh, Huy An, you want to um, give it a try? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I give it a try. I'm sorry? Yeah. Epidemiologist. Okay. All right. That's good. All right. So we have uh, Yong. You want to give it a try? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we go with the next, next, next word. Okay. So. Clean or present reason. Okay. I will raise a hand. Okay, so uh, say, say, say the first part, the clinical, right? So clinical presentation. No, yeah, so when you speak, you know, these words, just try to slowly speak at first. You don't have to speak as fast as American. Yeah. Clinical presentation. Yeah, so clinical presentation. Um, I have some so, All right. I have some, I wanted something. Sorry. Um, the stress, like a presentation. Okay. Presentation. Yeah. Presentation. Okay. Say, jump on my young to press. Then go upward a little bit. Presentation. No, yes, no. Uh, yeah. So presentation. So you, you. You put the uh, emphasis on the first one. So okay. So if it's if it's a verb, you say present. Neoma is a noun. Then you say presentation. So pre, you have to say presentation. But as as long as you say the word slowly, people will understand you. It doesn't matter presentation or presentation. Okay. It doesn't matter as long as you say it slowly. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we go Thank with you. the next. Yeah, we go with the next word. Um, I want some somebody to give it a try. Let me try. Okay, sure. Go ahead. Uh, pathophysiology. Ah, perfect. Great. See, you already know our English. That's good. All right. Who else want to try? Okay. Um, uh, oh. Go ahead, then. Okay. Pathophysiology. No. Okay. So, no. Do it slowly. First, one word at a time. How do you say the first word? Uh, Pathophysiology. Just say patho. Pathophysiology. So, so, so pathophysio. Phy yeah. Physiology. So Ology. pathophysiology. Pathophysiology. Yeah. Pathophysiology. Thank you. So first part, you just break down the ology. Okay. So just remember ology, and then you add the physio. So physiology, and then you add the patho to it. So you pathophysiology. So do it backward, okay? So, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, that's good. All right. So we can go with the next word. Um, so diagnostic testing. So that's that's a little bit harder. So, the um, uh, hip. You want to help them out with the diagnostic? Diagnostic. Uh, testing. Right. Testing. Yeah. All right. How about the uh, new GE? New GE treatment. Mm -hmm. All right. That's too easy. Um, and then we have the uh, public health uh, related information. So I think that's easy too. All right. So these are all just a medical terminology. So that's what we try to, um, you know, teach you guys, you know, uh, pronounce the words correctly and slowly. Um, yes. Yeah. So hopefully that you guys be more active, okay? You want to speak English? This is a safe place to talk, okay? Nobody's going to laugh or anything. Mm. All right, so now to the medical part. So we all, med you know, we are medical students, so we have to, you know, learn medicine. All right, so the question will be, which one of this following state is right about tuberculosis or TB? Uh, so TB is an acute disease. 
TB is a curable, but kills about 5,000 people every day. TB is a chronic disease and non-curable. And TB is a classified as a cancer disease. Three. All right, no, so I want me not non-curable. So I'm gonna pick one. Now I'm gonna pick one person and you're gonna explain to me, okay? So what does that mean by TB is an acute disease? Uh, just translate it to Vietnamese, it's fine. Who, who wanna give it a try? Uh, you want to translate this into Vietnamese? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, explain it. Câu số một là bệnh lao là một bệnh cấp tính. Okay. Uh, you want to give? You want to translate the rest too? Uh, yes. Okay. Sure. Uh, câu số hai, câu trả lời số hai, bệnh lao là một bệnh chữa được nhưng nó giết đến năm nghìn người mỗi ngày. Okay. Lao là một uh, bệnh mãn tính và không thể chữa được. Câu số bốn, bệnh lao thì được phân loại là một trong những bệnh cấp ung thư. Okay. Uh, what do you think the answer is? Uh, that's good. Yeah, that is fine. Yeah, I think it's it's fine. Uh, it's actually correct. I think. Okay, Hip Hip is the one that wrote the question, so I'm gonna leave it to him. But I think based on my medical knowledge, I think it's correct. The answer is number two. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, they they saw number two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you explain? Can you explain to me why? I thought it was three two. I'm just <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's two. Because because number three is they say non curable, right? Yeah. So do you and think TB is curable? No. Exactly. So TB is curable. Yeah. Okay. See, so uh, see, a lot of people in Vietnam do think that halal is not curable. Yeah, I, I think that's the typical risk is just mm -hmm. and it's not a curable. No. See, see, so it's actually curable. It's just a very, very hard disease to to uh, to treat. If you have to treat it for a long period of time, for months. I mean, some people are on medication for six months to nine months. So that's why it's yeah. called as chronic disease, but it's curable. So that's why number three is wrong. Okay. So it's yeah. non curable. I think that the right answer is number two, I think. Yeah, the right answer is number two. Yes. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> don't have you, you don't have to say sorry. It's fine, you know. It's fine, okay? This is yeah. all for, for learning. So it's, as long as you say something, it's fine to me, okay? All right. So I, we I don't give another answer. Time. If that makes you feel better, I'm an M1 See? and I don't know. <laughs> so even um, Katu, she's a medical student in, in the United States. She doesn't know the answer. It's okay, you know. All right, so we go to the next slide, uh, Hip. All right, so this slide, yeah. um, we, uh, we're talking about the uh, medical dictionary, right? So I want to break down what the meaning of the tuberculosis to you guys. So as I said earlier, medical terminology is a combination of um, more than two words. So we have to break it down. Tuberculosis, that means have two words in it. Tuber tubercle and osis. So what the meaning of the typical? Typical is a small nodule or a discrete mass lesion. Or the, um, in um, the osis, the, the osis, you see right here, the suffix, the osis meaning a stay condition process, for example, um, cyanosis or um, homeostasis. So you see, like, if you understand how to write down the medical terminology, you can, you can able to understand any uh, majority of med medical uh, terminology. See, like, if you understand what the meaning of osis right here, you can understand what, what the sin sinosis, homeostasis, or uh, um, tuberculosis. Do you guys understand clearly my meaning now before I move on? Okay, before you move on, I actually want people to uh, say the word tuberculosis because I think that's a hard word to say too. So, you know, all right. So I want I want someone, you know, volunteer and pronounce the word tuberculosis. Me? All right, go ahead. Yeah, tuberculosis. Okay, great. 
Can, can you tell, can you pronounce the bacteria that cause tuberculosis? Uh, mycobacteria tuberculosis. Perfect. All right. So thank you. Anyone else want to try uh, tuberculosis? Yes. All right, Lee Man, go ahead, Lee Man, go ahead. Uh, tuberculosis. I'm sorry? Tuberculosis. Okay. Tuberculosis. Okay. Bacterium tuberculosis. Okay. So uh, slow down. Uh, when you say when you say tuberculosis, you have to pronounce it uh, slowly a little bit, like tuberculosis. So you have to each word have to to say you have to pronounce it. So so I think okay. it's fine. So you know so tuberculosis. So every word has to be pronounced. All right. So, uh, Tuberculosis. Yeah. Great. Okay. So, head, uh, you want to go go ahead? All right. So, when when you understand uh, when you understand a meaning of each part, right? You understand what what, what the osis mean. You understand what the tubercle mean. So that can be that that can be translated to a condition of a small nodal lesion. You you see how easy it is, right? So, what a definition about the um, tuberculosis? A disease uh, caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. So, we inhale the organism, result in a lung chronic infection, and a granuloma is a hallmark of this, of this infection due to inflammatory host response. <laughs> and um, I already underlined. Uh, you have to understand what the inhalation mean, the acronyms mean, mm -hmm. uh, granuloma mean, the uh, inflammatory mean, the host meaning. So we will go on to uh, try to understand what the meaning of the underlying word. So before we move on, I want people to, uh, someone volunteer and explain to me what is a granuloma means. Anyone, just raise your hand. Hmm. No, not me, not me. <laughs> not, not, not you, okay, that's fine. Anyone else? All right, so Lee Man, go ahead. Uh, oh, no, uh, hang on. First of all, how do you say your name first? You introduce yourself quickly. Uh, my name is Man. Huh? Man, Man. Man, Man? Okay, I thought you were Lee Man. Man like the mom. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's why you have to introduce yourself, you know? You know, so uh, Man, okay, Man, you go ahead. I want you to try to, to explain it in English slowly. It's fine, you know. Uh, I don't know how to explain it in English. I thought really? you. No, I, I want you to try to understand. It. Okay, how about Vietnamese? How do you explain it in Vietnamese? Uh, trong tiếng Việt thì nó có nghĩa là mô hạt. Okay, so what is a mô hạt? Um, đây là một phản ứng viêm của cơ thể và nếu như mà nhìn trên giải phẫu bệnh đấy thì cái nước ở trong cùng là nước bị hoại tử sau đó thì tới uh, cái nước ở bên ngoài của cái nước hoại tử thì sẽ có các cái tế bào đơn nhân tế bào viêm đơn nhân đến xâm chiếm và cuối cùng thì ở bên ngoài cùng thì sẽ được uh, bao phủ với một nước sơ bị sơ hóa để It's a reaction, it's an inflammatory reaction. You know, short and simple. It's an inflammatory reaction uh, caused by your body to basically have the inflammatory cells, you know, cover this whatever in the middle. All right, uh, so yeah, so we can go to the next. We, we have a slide to explain granuloma, but that, that was great, thank you. All right, about granuloma, right? So, a granuloma is a focal collection of the inflammatory cells at size of the tissue infection. It includes activated macrophage. And when the, when, um, the um, macrophage is activated, they become the uh, epithelial cell or the uh, Langerhans Johnson cells. So, uh, about uh, talking about the medical terminology, I want to I want you guys to understand the OMA after granuloma. You see the OMA right here. The OMA right here meaning an abnormal mass, like carcinoma, right? 
yeah. lymphoma, mel uh. melanoma, right? So when you guys when you guys see the oma right here, it it meaning the abnormal mass. Period. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Can someone you know? So I think he did a great job with this. So when you see all this word, try to uh, pronounce it backward. So you see this oma. So instead of say, you know, like you don't know how to pronounce lymphoma, you can start with the oma first. So like oma and add the lymph to it. So lymphoma, say oma melanoma. Okay, so oma carcinoma. Okay, so if you just, just say it backward, it will, it will help you a little bit. So uh, some of the words that here is a little bit hard to say too. So macrophages, um, you know, Langerhans, uh, giant cells or lymphocytes. Um, so these are also words that you can try to pronounce um, a little bit better. Okay, so hip, go ahead. Next one. All right, so um, talking about granuloma. So why do we have um, granuloma? Because of the, um, because of the, uh, our body try to fight off the bacteria. Yeah. So how the our body try to fight off the bacteria? So first, uh, the um, the bacteria will be inhaled into our lung, right? And the alveolar macrophage will go into uh, will go to contact with the bacteria and try to eat try to eat the bacteria. But however, because of this um, mycobacterium, they have a capsule, and when this bacteria have a capsule, it's not easy to be uh, phagocytosis and to kill by the macrophage. So that's why. Uh, it needs a help from our immune system. That is the uh, adaptive immunity. Adaptive immunity. They have uh, lymphocyte. They have B cell and T cell. And the T cell will go to activate macrophage. And when they activate, um, when you activate macrophage, the macrophage will become the uh, Langerhans giant cell or uh, epithelioid uh, cells. This cell right here will try to uh, make a granulate, granulate, um, granuloma. You can see right here, right? The, um, a mass. And in this mass right here, you, in this mass right here, you see a necrosis. <coughs> a necrosis that means like a death, a death of either bacteria or a death of the um, macrophage. And uh, a red right here, you can see the um, lymphoma, like TH1 cell. And in, in this picture, you can see this one, we are in the uh, out in the uh, alveolar, right, in the uh, lung tissue. And in the lung tissue, you can see right here the alveolar wall, the uh, pneumocyte, and in uh, this right here, we see the um, granuloma. And as I said earlier, you, you can see this, the macrophage become the um, Langerhans giant cell and um, the uh, epithelial cell. And as I said earlier, we have the central necrosis. This one is a uh, central necrosis. And they have uh, lymphocyte. That means like uh, TH1 cell. All right. Um, do you guys um, want to add something else to this slide? So I have a question for uh, actually for Hip and Katu. So this mm -hmm. question is for you both. Do you, why do you think okay. that our body has granulomas? Oh, uh, so just because like it's the granuloma from um, mm -hmm. when our body cannot eradicate the, the infectious agent. So mm -hmm. mycobacterium is very hard to eradicate because the uh, mm -hmm. and he said that uh, he said that there's a capsule above this. So mm -hmm. what do our body do? Like, oh, I cannot remove you. I'm gonna imprison you, mm -hmm. and by imprison mean that they're gonna walk up into like uh, like a spot with a brim of lymphocyte and lymphophage or the stuff to prevent them from spreading to mm -hmm. other tissues. So that's why that's either formation of granuloma, but it's cost Great. more than that. Yeah, I think that's the, the whole point of uh, you know, having a granuloma. Our body cannot get rid of the bacteria or whatever in there. You know, it could be a foreign body. So, uh, you know, instead of getting rid of it, we can't kill it. So we just wore it off. But the question yeah. for you all is going to be, what cells are important in the process of, you know, imprisoning this this bacteria? Uh, as far as I learned just this <laughs> week, uh -huh. macrophage is one, okay, lymphocyte exactly. and 
All right. Okay. I, you got the right sale. So, all right. Pip, pip, go ahead. So the next slide is just an additional slide of TB granuloma that I put information in. Okay. Um, so TB granuloma has some, has some uh, experience. Um, so it has no reservation of cellular architecture. So you cannot see like the cell, the board of cell. You cannot recognize the cell. You just see a mush. It's just like a liquid, like kind of thing. So, um, and um, so if you see like the the picture on the left, cái hình ở bên trái thì thì cái ở cái góc ở cái góc bên góc dưới thì mình sẽ thấy một cái vùng mà nó đã đỏ mà không nhìn thấy được những cái cái xe giống như là vùng ở phía trên thì cái vùng ở uh, cái vùng màu đỏ đỏ này nè là đó là đó, đó là cái vùng của granuloma because no reservation of cellular architecture and uh, the arrow the black arrow point into the multi uh, nuclear aid so that's it um, that's it the uh, macrophage macrophage uh, that fuse together to become a, a multi nucleate giant cell and just like digest the the necrosis tissue and the tb ranuloma is characterized by caseous necrosis Case, caseous mean cheese like so it looked like a cheese so the picture in the middle and on the left uh, on the right the the part with white whitish look like cheese in the cases uh, in the process. So um, yeah, so the basically that's how the granuloma present in the TB case is appearing like that. So that's it. All right. That's all I want to add. All right. So anybody have a question before we move on? Because like, I don't want you guys to get lost. No, no question. No question so far. Yeah. I think everyone is smart, so you know we all understand. It's okay. it's okay. really we, we all understand, so that's good. Hang on, we got one question from Ben. Go uh, excuse me. Um, exactly. I I don't want to tell. I don't want to explain what you thought <laughs> in that <laughs> because I don't study. I I'm not yet studying. Um, it's okay. Just keep going. We have some other lectures. I mean, some other uh, English uh, lesson. Okay. So this is for you know people that really want to learn medical knowledge, but we also have some English uh, lesson uh, forward. See, yeah, yeah. So we have medical terminologies. Yeah, come on. Yeah. All right, hip. Go ahead. All right. So uh, as as you know, right, Mycobacterium is belong to the obligate aerobic bacteria. So uh, talking about medical terminology, I would like to know, to know so, uh, so what the obligate aerobic bacteria meaning? So you mean you, whenever you see the obligate in the medicine, it's talking about some bacteria. And obligate meaning re restrict or, re or requires. And aerobic that means oxygen. So I have a sentence right here for you to guys understand. An obligate aerobic bacteria requires oxygen for living. Human is an obligate error. Uh, you ever done aerobic ex exercise, right? Yeah. So the aerobic is we you very often. I, I think we should have someone uh, pronounce the word aerobic because a lot of people use that uh, in Vietnam. You know, like aerobic exercise. You know, so I, I think it would be great. It's, it's it's a hard word to pronounce. So, so I want I want someone to pronounce that word for me. Anyone? Aerobic, right? Yeah. Aerobic. How aerobic. Are, okay, how so aerobic is mean they need oxygen, right? What about the, the the bacteria that don't need oxygen? How do you say those? Anaerobic. Huh? Aerobic. Aerobic. Okay, so who's uh, main? Main, right? Yeah, get, go ahead. Give it a try. Mm, I think it's the anaerobic. Yeah. How about the, the one that doesn't use oxygen? Uh, anaerobic. <laughs> good, good I guess. Try. Good, good try. Okay. Uh, um, uh, hip, you want to say the uh, the other word, the antonym of the aerobic? Yeah, anaerobic, right? Yeah, anaerobic. So you just anaerobic. added the yeah the, the anaerobic. So anaerobic. So just in the front in front of you know aerobic is anaerobic. So. 
so you you are right. Okay. Thank you. All right. So uh, move on. Uh, the uh, surface ASE. So what? That, whenever you say the ASE right here, it is the enzyme, and this enzyme is a functional protein that's catalyzed a specific chemical reaction in human body. Like we have a lactase, right? So whenever you got drink milk in uh, in, your, in your digestion, it stuff it requires lactate to digest to digest your lactose or DNA RNA polymerase. Uh, this DNA and RNA polymer is tried to uh, make in uh, DNA or RNA polymer. Uh, protease, protease try to digest or try to break down protein. Collagenase, collagenase is an enzyme try to break down collagen. Carboxylase, carboxylase is the enzyme try to uh, break down uh, carbon, uh, carbon. And uh, catalase is catalase. So do you guys have any question about the uh, suffix ASE? I think it clearly. Okay. All right. Move on. Yeah. Pathogen. So, uh, pathogen is the, an infection agent that causes a disease or illness to its host. So, in here, in here, I have um, a um, intracellular. So, what the intracellular mean? It's located or it's located within or inside of a cell. For example. For example, our uh, mycobacterium is the, an intracellular, right? Intracellular pathogen. Anaerobic. And uh, here is um, another example, an intramuscular injection. That means you have to inject a needle into a muscle, right? That's called an mm -hmm. intramuscular injection. Or uh, mm -hmm. the fluids were introduced intravenously into patient body. So that, that's why you, you say that the, the intravenous I mean like you have to inject into the vein, right? Mm -hmm. So intravenous or intramuscle. So it tells you a location where you inject. Ở Việt Nam mình hay nói đi truyền nước bị đi truyền IV á, cái từ yeah. IV đó là taken from intravenously. Mm -hmm. IV is shortened for intravenously, mean that you introduce the fluid into into the vein. Mm -hmm. Great. Great job, uh, All right. All right. Uh, all right, Thích Tom, you have a question? À, em có một ít câu hỏi về cái phần intra của cái uh -huh. phần, uh, ví dụ trong cái phần uh, trước là học về, về phần ngoại ấy, thì uh -huh. nó có phần gì nội uh, nội uh, nội bào với ngoại bào ấy. Yeah. Thì so, cái từ intra với từ extra này là hai từ dùng là dùng đối lập nhau phải không anh? Yeah, đúng rồi. Uh, intra is you know into right so inside the cell extra is mean extra is outside the cell outside the cell oh. okay okay well, yep mm -hmm. yes uh, all right now we go to the next slide all right so talking about the organism but like in this case because of the violent or fungus or bacteria actually it's very very small so that's why they, i have the microorganism so you know like we have micro that like 10 to the uh, 10 to the um, uh, minus 9, right? That's micro. And uh, you, you can also put like na nano organism or nanotechnology. So nano is also uh, the, uh, a medical terminology also. So uh, microorganism is the small individual form of life. So it has to be alive, such as virus, fungus, bacteria. All right, talking about a time scale, we call it in the uh, clinical presentation or the uh, clinical medical terminology or diagnosis. They always, um, the, the acute or subacute or chronic is uh, used very often. So this uh, acute or subacute or chronic is talking about a time scale. So with the acute, it's a very um, sudden, very abrupt, uh, like a rapid onset of a disease. So that's why uh, it can last uh, to uh, hours. The acute is uh, about a week, and chronic is at a time scale. A disease or condition lasts months. Host 
so in this situation, in the medicine host, just, just thinking about human, right? And microbacterium, tuberculosis lip, that are a human. So human is the host to the um, organism. Inflammation is the uh, immune, uh, immune response elicited by trauma, injury, on organism and um, sub, let me see, uh, substance of protective human body. All right. So uh, go back to the medical terminology. You see the I N right here. The I N right here would mean in inhalation or inspiration. That means breathe in. X right. X I mean out. Exhalation, expiration. You guys have any question on this slide? Uh, I I have a question. Can yeah. You hear me? Okay. Uh, first, so uh, first yes. of all, hang on. Uh, first of all, can you introduce yourself? Uh, uh so uh, my name is uh, Long, but uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and I'm a first year. Okay. So I I'm pretty late to this because you know I I didn't quite sleep last last night. Okay. So, you know, I'm, I'm I'm pretty late. Yeah. So no, I have okay. a yeah. Go ahead. I have a little question here. Mm -hmm. So you say that microorganism, mm -hmm. but then and you say a small individual form of life. Yeah. But I, you know, I don't think virus is a form of life. You know, because uh, they 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 are not made of cells like other life forms. So I think virus is something that cannot be you know categorized at a life form. I just think that you know they like because I read somewhere that to be categorized uh, as a life form you must be made up of cells yeah. and we think that virus are not made of cells. Yeah I mean I, I agree too but uh, I think this at this point when we talk of microorganism we just we probably, uh, you know it, something that we cannot see by human eyes so that's why I have the micro in it. So, yeah. you know, technically, virus is not, uh, you know, a life form, uh, if you argue with it. But I think it's just for technical, you know, the technical terminology. So, all right. But thank you for, you know, the uh, um, explanation. Any other questions? All right. So I think we can go with the next slide. It's going to be uh, the fun slide. Yep. So at this point... I want people to explain this word for me, you know, either English or Vietnamese, I don't care, and try to pronounce it. Can we get um, one person just, you know, say the word? One line. Me? Me? Okay, go ahead. Uh, I think the first one, aerobic, means uh -huh. that uh, you need oxygen. Great. And it's, uh, and it's antonyms, uh, Anna. Uh, anaerobics. Okay, right? so yeah. you can say ana anaerobic is fine. Yeah, and yeah. anaerobic. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Anaerobic. Okay, yeah, it's me right. with uh, oxygen. Thank you. All right, so we have another one saying the next line. Anyone want to? Who? Anyone want to say the next line or practice? Mm. Be, come on, no one see you guys. Come on, just this is a the you know a chance for you to practice English. Okay, let, let me say this. They could not. Let me raise your hands. Okay, uh, people okay, can use this. a raise hand function to you know. Uh, yes, I think. Here. Okay, yeah. next one. The second one is obligate. Okay. Obligate. obligate. And okay. obligate means like the to the restrict restrict to you of something like. Uh, I don't know how to say, but like the to me, this restriction. Yeah, that means you have to obligate. Yeah. Like you have to. Let's yeah. say I, I'm obligated to give you money. I mean, I have to give you money. Yes, so yes. All right. What's the other and, one? And facultative, facultative, or what? Just uh, facultative. How to pronounce it? it? You say that's fine. Facultative is fine. Yeah. Huh? Have you want to help him out? Okay, so obligation, right? Like we know that is the obligate. I mean, like we 
must have or is required in the order for us to survive, right? So, and uh, facultative, that means like it is capable to give oxygen, but it don't have to, right? Because like, some, some um, bacteria, they can, uh, some bacteria is uh, facultative, that means like it, they can, uh, they have the ability to use oxygen, but they don't have to. Okay, so uh, let, let me let me help some people. You know, when you see a, a, a you know a word that you cannot say, I tell people just read it backward. So how do you say that? You know, the second part, you just say, you know, tative, right? And then you add facultative. So facultative. Yeah. So just say the word first. You know, the word that you know. So tative, and then you just add back. You know, facultative. All right, all right. Let's go to the next. Uh, I think I think we already so you know talk about the intercellular and then, uh, if you wanna explain the intercellular. All right. So uh, intra well, intra is about within or inside, right? But inter is different. Inter is like between, like between, um, like inter relationship, right? I relation. Uh, Interrelationship. I mean, I relationship relationship between you and your uh, boyfriend or girlfriend, right? Or international relationship. It a uh, relationship between Vietnam, U.S. or um, another nation. That's why inter is between intercellular. That means between a cell, right? So, yeah, mm -hmm. sorry. So intracellular is within one cell. Intercellular, it have to have to be between at least two cells and up. So if it makes any easier. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, didn't, I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't even I know have, that. That's, that's good. For, that's for good. example, in intercellular connection or intercellular signaling, right? In the intercellular signaling, that means like you I, I have a signal from one cell go to a, cell, a second cell. Intercellular. Yeah. This will get confused a lot, but think of yeah. intra is within one, and inter it have to be at least two and up. Just two, you know, inter relationship. You have to have two people to make a relationship, right? So mm -hmm. inter is have to be at least two and up. Okay. Yeah, that's the connection. Yeah. yeah. All right. Can we have someone uh, stay and explain the last the last line for me? You know, anyone just raise your hand. There's a function called you know uh, raise your hand. Also, go ahead, Greg. Greg. Uh, so the last one is symptomatic, okay. right? And mm -hmm. you know the opposite is asymptomatic. So okay. symptomatic may, means that it can it show or serve as a sign or symptom. So you can uh, check the disease. While asymptomatic means that mm -hmm. there is no observable signs or symptoms to check. I think. Okay. All right. So, um, you know, like uh, when we pronounce it, it's called symptomatic uh, or asymptomatic. So you see this a lot in English uh, when they add the A uh, in front of a word, that means that's, uh, it's, it's usually antonym, basically. So it's the opposite. So symptomatic versus asymptomatic. So you uh, stress is on the, the symptoms. So it's symptomatic versus asymptomatic. All right, so I think we have to go a little bit faster because uh, it's been like an hour when, when we didn't get through like half of the lectures. <laughs> All right, so this one is fun. So I'm going to have someone to, uh, you know, uh, basically say the questions. All right, let's pick someone. I mean, it's, there's a lot of people here and I want people to speak. Uh, so anyone who you know, want to just, just say some, you know, speak some English. So I have a uh, key. Uh, Jimai Vu, right? Do you want to give it a try? Nope. Or people, anyone here? Tuyan. All right, Yong. All right, let me mute, uh, unmute Yong. Yeah, go ahead, Yong. You want to um, read the questions? Raise your hand or what? No, read your question. You raise your hands to read the question, right? Uh, uh, I think I can, I just translate to Vietnamese, I think. No, no, uh, you, have to, you have to read the question. I don't need you to translate to Vietnamese, so this one. 
I don't right. get it. Uh, let's see, let's see. Fee, you want to read the question? Uh, uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, Fee, go ahead, read the question. First, introduce yourself, please. Uh, my name is, uh, this is my sister name, not my name. So, sorry, right, so my name is Dong Han. Yeah. Okay, Dong Han, all right, go ahead. Um, can you uh, give us a little quick introduction about yourself? Uh, I'm a first year student, yeah. Okay, and, and where? Uh, Ho Chi Minh uh, University of Pharmacy and Medicine. Yeah. All right, great to, great to uh, know you're doing that. All right, go ahead and read the questions. Okay, so question. A 50 years old male presented to the emergency department or emergency mm -hmm. room. He mm -hmm. complained that he has been coaching up and take yellow sputum with a lot of red blood in it. And mm -hmm. do you describe his symptom? How do you describe? Uh, a, productive coach with blood. B, non-productive coach with blood. C, productive coach with blood tingles, sputum. Mm -hmm. Okay, D, productive coach and, and hemolysis. Mm -hmm. And E, I don't know. I just put down the yellow sputum with blood in it. Okay, so one feedback for you uh, is cough. It's cough, cough. is not, yeah, so cough. Okay. Uh, cough. With the, you know how the GH, you would just pronounce it into an F, so like cough. Ah, cough. Okay, I so with an F at the end. Okay, great. So uh, anyone want to try the answer? Just explain to me. I think D. D? Oh, great. Okay, so since you already know the answer, can you explain to me what is, how do you, how do you say D? Why do you pick D? <laughs> because I uh, just learned about that in my okay. school. Yeah, yeah, go. Yeah, so can you explain why you pick these? You got you got to have some reason why you pick D, right? Yeah. Because uh the patient with uh TB uh usually uh present the uh, um the manifestations with yeah. uh cogging up of blood or mm -hmm. blood strain mucus from yeah. uh, their yeah. lungs. Yeah. So you know, This has nothing yeah. to do with TB, you know, right? Yeah. Yeah. How, yeah, this how is, the yeah, this has nothing to do with TB. So yeah. the reason why I wrote this question is because in, in English, we use a lot of medical terms, you know, basically because we don't want to write a, a note that's so long. So that's why we use a lot of medical terms to shorten out, you know, like the symptoms. So when, when I wrote this question, basically, what is exact, what do you, how do you understand productive cough? What is productive cough? Anyone? What is productive cough? The answer? Oh, this is yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I can answer. Okay. So productive yeah. cough means you actually produce something like, mm -hmm. you know, like sputum, like yeah. dog, and you hook it. And mm -hmm. non-productive cough means that you don't produce anything. It's the yeah. worst case. Yeah. So this is for you to, uh, um, you know, Katu uh, and hip. You know, when you go on the rotation, right, you ask the patient a lot of those questions. And they tell you all this, but when you put down into your notes, you have to put, you know, like you have to shorten this. So the patients say that they coughing up with thick yellow sputum. What you put down on your note is not thick yellow, you know, you, you do put down, but you put productive cough, okay? And if there's a blood in it, then we call it hemoptysis. So these are the terms that you have to learn to put into the medical um, notes, basically. Yeah. So yeah. the word hemoptysis means it's breaking down from the hemo, hemo means mm -hmm. blood. You know, like hema, hemo, hematology, hemo means blood, tipsis means mm -hmm. speeding. So yeah. hemotipsis basically means like... No, so it's called, it's called hemoptysis? I don't know, my M3 say hemoptysis. Yeah, hemoptysis, exactly. Yeah, hemoptysis, yeah, I say hemotipsis. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sorry. So no, I yeah, did learn it last week. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, so we go to the next slide. This slide is fun. All right, so this is purely for medical terminology and, you know, it's also uh, Vietnamese to it. So, all right, so we just, like uh, Atu said earlier, right? So cough with sputum, uh, how would you say that? Describe it in shorter terms. Anyone want to give it a try? Productive <laughs> cough. Uh, exactly, so cough with sputum mean productive cough. All right, so what about dry cough with no sputum? I just said earlier. Yeah, so how, how do you say from productive to... 
So it, it's productive. Exactly, non productive. All right. So oh, what about? Really? Yeah. <laughs> this, this is exactly. So it's productive and non -produ non productive cough. So it's that simple. You know, what about cough with sputum um, mixed with blood in it? Hemolysis. All right. Thank you. You know, I just teach you earlier, so you have to remember yeah. the word. So hemoptysis. What about vomit with blood? Hemoemesis. Can you break it down? So hema, it is like anything with blood, then I start mm -hmm. with hema, and emesis is a medical terminology. Termin uh, terminology for vomiting. Okay. Great. What about uh, blood in the stool? You know, fresh blood in the stool. I'm leaving to answer. Yeah. Anyone want to give a try? Hematochiza. Huh? I think you got it right, but you got to break it down. Did someone just say something? Hematochiza. Okay, so hemat. You got it right, I think. You just didn't pronounce correctly, but. Okay, so let's go to the next one, and then when we go through all the term terminology, then we can go back uh, to that one. All right, so what's the difference between the... Uh... <laughs> All right, so let's go through one by one, okay? So you have cough with sputum. So that means hawk or dam. So people say productive cough and non-productive cough. Okay. Yeah. So hemoptysis. <laughs> okay, so hemoptysis means hara mau. See, you can see, you can see. So I still have trouble saying this word. So hematemesis, I still sometimes cannot say it. But uh, hematochesia, so that's the one with the uh, um, uh, bright and fresh blood. And melina, uh, melina. Melina is uh, basically with old blood in the stool. So someone tell me what's the difference between uh, bright, blood, you know, bright red blood in the stool versus a dark old brown blood in the stool. What's the difference? Why do we have to describe it? It's just blood. Oh, I, I think the difference is uh, the locations of, uh, of the injuries. Because mm -hmm. uh, as what I learned, uh, when you got in the upper GI tract, this will result in that brown uh, mm -hmm. or blood install. But in right. the lower GI tract, this mm -hmm. will result in the first one. But why, why is it dark brown? Why is not any color? Why is not green? Why not yellow? Why is it dark brown? I don't know. But uh, yeah, I just learned about the mechanisms of that. Yeah, I know. I but that's, that's also what I'm asking you. You are a medical student now. What if your, your patient asks you, why my sleep is not you know, blue or green? Why is it brown? Well, dark brown with blood in it. I, I think, think because it's, it's originated. Huh? You know. I think because it's, it's originated, you know, the oxygen has to go out because it's have to travel pretty far to go into your anus. So it's no. not fresh no. anymore. No, I mean... Uh, uh, I think anyone? I can explain to the patients that uh, at first it's uh, going to be great, but during yeah. the process of moving in, uh, due to its movement in the GI tract, it's, uh, I mean, the microbes uh, mm -hmm. use and turn it into black brown. Yeah, dark brown, but why? The, the, I don't understand why it's a dark brown, but why is it old blood? It's, 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 it's dark brown and red. Why is uh, it colors? Maybe, uh, em nhớ là đợt đấy em học về hệ tiêu hóa là <laughs> yep. khi máu tác dụng, bởi vì uh, exactly. có dịch dày, à, dịch axit dạ dày, máu cộng với dịch axit dạ dày chỉ sẽ biến thành màu nâu và <laughs> sau cái quá trình, trong quá, quá trình hấp thuộc ở trong ruột thì Oh. Yeah. So that's the whole idea. <laughs> oh. so because of the because of blood, blood have hemoglobin, which is have iron in it, right? When you see iron being oxidized, it turns into like dark brown colors. 
red, like the red, bright, like dark brown colors. So that's why you leave blood outside in the oxygen for a while, it turned dark brown. Okay, all right, so uh, move on to the next one. So how, can someone say that word for me? Difficulty breathing? Anyone? Give it a try. You mean the Leave press blood, right? No, the difficulty yeah. breathing. How do you say difficulty breathing in English? Medical terminology. Dyspnea. Oh, that's great. Thank you. So, uh, what about the the other one? Can breathe when lying flat. Autonia. 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 Okay. Autonia. Yeah. So break it down again. You know, like like I said before. Dyspnea. Yeah. So. Go backwards. So, nia, dipnia, you know, nia, orthopnia. Right? Yeah. Okay, so tell me what's the difference between the, the two. This is medical knowledge now. This is for Kato and hip, like, you know. Uh, Why do we say one thing? What's the difference between dipnia versus orthopnia? It depends on the position of the patient. Yeah, but why? So when when you lay down, right? When you uh -huh. lay down, the, uh, the blood in the vein will uh, will go uh, um, flow back into the heart more than. So that's why when you have the uh, contractive heart power, you will increase the um, blood volume for the heart. So that's why you have uh, difficulty of breathing when you lay down back, lay down flat. So if the patient have difficulty when they lie flat, what does it tell you? That means like you have some uh, um, heart problem or lung problem. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah, that's the whole point. You know, if the patient have trouble when they lie flat, that means that either the heart is weak or either there's some fluid in the lung too. Yeah. Okay. All right, what about the next one? This one you see very often. Um, waking up in the middle of the night to catch your breath. I'll give, I'll give $10 to anyone who can say that word. Paracismo, not to know. Okay, that's, pretty, that's actually pretty good. Can you understand, what does a paroxysmal mean? For your life easier. Can I say it? If I say it, can you give me ten dollars? <laughs> well, you you live in America. You have to say it. I'm broke. All right. I'm broke. I need money. Sure. All right. If you can explain to me what the it's word paroxysmal means, what does paroxysmal mean? Uh, paroxysmal. I I just know nocturnal mean night. Uh, yeah, nocturnal is at night. What does it mean paroxysmal? I know it. I know it. Okay. <laughs> who, who, who say that I know it? Hey. Yep. All right, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Pro proximal, that means certain. Oh, wow. Okay, that's good. <laughs> All right. So, uh, hey, you know, one of, you guys didn't answer the question, so you know, I can ask you $10. That's good enough. You know. Okay, so we're going to have someone say the word, uh, you know, go one, one by one. Um, I see a lot of people, but not a lot of people participate in, you know, but um, we can go ahead, go to the next slide. I'm actually tired, so. Mm, mostly. It's not going to work. Uh, All right, one, this, so. Yeah, this is, this is go, go ahead. Anyone have any questions so far? I don't know, I cannot get it into a headphone. That's a little What's going on? Yeah, I'm not sure. All right, I think I don't think I have questions. All right, guys. So uh, with the uh, mycobacterium uh, tuberculosis, we already mentioned about the obligate in the ropes, uh, facultative intracellular pathogen, right? So why making uh, so talking about uh, virulent factor, so ability to infect or damage host. So uh, with this factor, like in the order to. Uh, into uh, get infection, the bacteria have to have to uh, some factor to to invade 
or damage our immune cell response. So with the catalase, you guys still remember the IHSE? So catalase, uh, it's drop it to uh, resistant an oxidation from our host cell and uh, cofactor. That means the cofactor right here is uh, very important. The cofactor right here is uh, help for the mycobacterium to escape the immune response and cause granuloma formation. And uh, the cofactor in the cell wall, the lipid, uh, and it's also uh, it activates neutrophil and release the TNF alpha. Without uh, cofactor, the mycobacterium cannot cause disease. And um, surfa uh, surfatize is the, the surface glyco uh, glycoprotein to inhibit phagosome, lysosome fusion. So uh, on this factor right here, they point to a macrophage. So if if the bacteria want to survive, they have they have to um, kill or uh, escape from macrophage. So all this factor right here try to. Uh, uh, help the cell um, survive from macrophage attack. Baba, you want to ask some something? I think he just breaks my accent, yeah. Yeah, I think so. The exactly the meaning translate core factor to Vietnamese. Exactly, I mean exactly the the translator. <laughs> That's kind of difficult. I don't think there's a translation, you know, directly to Vietnamese because I don't know. I'm honestly really don't know how to translate that. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I I can try I I, I can try to um, translate to Vietnamese. Where 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 do you want me to translate to Vietnamese? Where? I mean the core factor. I mean core uh, factors. Yeah. 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 So core factor just um uh, có nghĩa là cái um, cái um, cái mặt ngoài của con uh, vi khuẩn á, cái mặt ngoài của nó là nó nó được cấu tạo bởi uh, uh, chất uh, carbohydrate với chất lipid và nhờ và nhờ vào cái vợ nhờ vào cái co factor đó đó nên nó có thể uh, không bị uh, macro mac, macro phải hoặc là new neutrophil ăn ăn nó thì nếu như mà mac, macro phải với new neutrophil á mà không có ăn ăn nó thì nó sẽ tồn tại được uh, trong cơ thể con người nó tóm gọn lại là như như vậy đó yes I got it yes okay I think we can uh, skip the, the TB pathophysiology. It's too complicated. Skip it? Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the uh, um, basically the uh, clinical presentation because I feel that that's more relevant for people. Yeah. So there were, this All will right, be so the slides. Yeah. So, okay. Kato, uh, yes. make sure you remember the slide too, okay? Because you're going to need that for step one. Thank you. I will. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, clinical presentations, uh, like I say before. Uh, so, I forgot the Vietnamese, but uh, clinical presentation means that uh, someone comes in with some sort of size and symptoms. Uh, so, tell me what's exactly the difference between signs and symptoms. This is for you, Kato and Hit Ming. Like, so seems to me what the patient tell you. Yeah. So the patient tell you I have like bro, I have productive mm -hmm. carpal sputum and thing like that. Sign so yeah. is what you felt upon the exam. It can be like physical exam or it can okay. be like extra. I should not put it there. It's, it's, not, it's, no, it's, it's right there. So that's why you see it. Okay. So uh, clinical presentation of TB. Uh, you know, anyone with Hall out, like, what do you see? What do you usually see when someone like call out comments and they complain to? Them? So they have fever. Uh, I mean, soap. 
right? Like nice sweat, I mean that they sweat a lot at night. Uh, sometimes people will describe like they're waking up in the middle of the night uh, with plenty of sweat. Uh, weight loss is usually because of the bacteria is, you know, it's usually a chronic problem. Uh, some people tend to lose weight uh, and cough uh, can be productive or non-productive and hemoptysis, uh, which is coughing up with blood. So anyone tell me why do you have hemoptysis? Like what caused you to have hemoptysis? This is for you too, Kato and Hipwin. You can answer it. Uh, How come I, some people I can pop? Uh, let Kato answer first. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. I haven't studied. I'm two months old. So. What, what do you think so why people like... cop up with blood? Yeah, because of the uh, pulmonary uh, vascular is the rupture or damage. So that's why I, they leak the leak blood. Because the uh, vascular, pulmonary vascular is a damage, a rupture. So mm -hmm. the uh, blood will diffuse from capillary yeah. pulmonary to the uh, uh, alveoli. Yeah. And so, when can you have one? blood and you um, just uh, vomit blood out yeah. from that. So can someone cough a lot and they all of a sudden cough up blood? No, because it has to require a rupture of the uh, endothelium, right? <coughs> I mean, there's some patient with, you know, when they cough a lot, they all of a sudden they have a little bit of blood, but, you know, in the sputum, but that's, we don't call it hemoptysis. We just call them, mm -hmm. you know, like the blood tank sputum, right? So we don't call it hemoptysis. Hemoptysis is just act, like actively bleeding from the lungs. So, you mm -hmm. know, when we actually divide it into um, hemoptysis, is it, you know, like, is it... Uh, Sometimes it can be an emergency if you're actively bleeding a lot into the lung. So sometimes they have to take the uh, scope down into your lung to see which you know vessel is bleeding. Um, so that's why. So you, you're right. So when you have an invasion or erosion of the blood vessel, like the pulmonary blood vessel, then you cough it up with blood. Uh, so that's the reason why. So these uh, bacteria, sometimes these granulomas, it can sit next to a pulmonary blood vessel and sometimes it ruptures and it causes people to cough up blood. Uh, so when you do a chest X-ray, uh, what is the most common uh, location of the TB? Usually it's in the upper lobe infiltrations, um, and you see the cavitary lesions. Uh, the reason why it's cavitary is the same as granuloma, right? So you have the central necrosis, and the necrosis on a chest X-ray will show up as black, uh, which, you know, that's why it show up as cavitary. But why upper lobe? Why not lower lobe? Anyone, this is all anyone to answer. Because there are much it. oxygen there. Okay, and so explain more why. So the, the oxygen, there's oxygen there, I agree. Because uh, TB is a strict hydro, so it needs oxygen. So, so yeah, exactly. So it's an obligated arrow, so that's why it needs oxygen. That's why it lives in the upper lobes in order to get the oxygen. So that's why when you do a chest X-ray, someone who coughing a lot, someone who is an immigrant coming with a chest X-ray with a cavitary upper lobe, the first thing they always think about is TB. And they have the TB, they have to rule out TB. Um, so we have active versus latent TB. So active means that they are symptomatic, which means that they either coughing with blood, they have symptoms, you know, like fever, nice wet uh, cough with hemoptysis. Uh, people with latent TB mean that they're asymptomatic, which means that, you know, they don't usually don't have any symptoms. Sometimes they have just a little bit of cough, but usually not a lot. Um, so they, these people are used tend to be carrier, and then uh, sometimes something happens and it can be reactivated. Um, all right, so just remember the pictures. Um, so that's going to be on step one. You see that cavitary lesions on the upper lobe? Definitely a TB. You have to think about TB, but there are also fungal infection that you also think about too. All right, Hib, you want to go to the next slide? All right, so this is different between a latent TB and uh, an active TB. Uh, so basically, a active TB, which means that the TB is active and it grows in the body, so it makes a patient feel sick and they have symptoms. Uh, and usually at this point, is bacteria is you know actively dividing. So they can spread from person to person. Uh, but if someone who has latent TB, mean that you know the TB is not really active, so it just 
kind of grow in the person's uh, body so you don't feel sick or you don't have any symptoms. And usually you're not coughing, so that's why you can't spread from person to person. Uh, so TB is spreading through, uh, you know, uh, respiratory secretion, like sputum, uh, someone sneeze, you know, like uh, you breathe in the air that they sneeze in. So that can cause us the TB to transmit from one patient to the next one. And they can advance through the, to, you know, advance through TB disease. So that's the difference between latent and active TB. I'm just going to go a little bit faster because, you know, uh, it's already been two hours. So, uh, so how do you diagnose TB? Um, so this probably a lot of you guys know, I think Katu and Hip, uh, when you first came to America, they always do the skin test. Um, so mm -hmm. we call it the PPD test, uh, basically stand for purified protein derivative skin test. Uh, but lately they've been having a new test they call it the quantiferon. Uh, basically they're measuring the IFN uh, gamma release assays. Uh, do you know why they measure the uh, INF, uh, the uh, interferon assay? How does that help them tell you whether you have TB or not? Hep, do you know? Yeah, because that, uh, you know, like in the order that like we measure the uh, interferon because when you have the bacteria, the interferon will increase that like a signal for our immune re response to fight the bacteria. But why, why, why not any other? Why, uh, you know, um, interferon gamma? What is the role of the interferon gamma? Gamma interferon. I think it, it, have, it have something to do with macrophage, right? Yeah, so it used to help uh, basically one macrophage to signals to another macrophage. So it activates the macrophage so that it can come together and enclose the bacterium. So that's why if you have a high level of, macro, uh, of the interferon gamma, that means that signaling that there is some sort of, you know, uh, macrophage, activated macrophage. And so that's why they measure it and it's a blood test. So, you know, you don't want to do a skin test, you do a blood test for that. Uh, but the problem with these, this test is that it doesn't tell you whether you have active or latent TB. It just tells you that you've been exposed to TB before. Uh, so I think for people uh, in Vietnam, uh, we all get the BCG vaccine. Uh, you know, you know, you get a BCG vaccine when you see that uh, big scar on your arms. That's a, the, that's basically the scar from the BCG vaccine. So usually the BCG vaccine will come positive uh, for a lot of people. Uh, you know, uh, that come from um, uh, Vietnam to America, uh, the BCG vaccines is, uh, in, in interact with this uh, uh, PPD also the inter uh, quantiferon. Not with the quantiferon, but the PPD test would become positive sometimes. Uh, but the most diagnosis test is a sputum culture. So you ask the patient to cough up uh, the sputum. You collect the sputum and then you do the uh, AFAB smear uh, and also the culture. Um, so the smear basically uh, is a microscopic examination. So you look under a microscope and then you, uh, you stain the, the, you know, the sputum to see if there's any bacteria in it. Uh, but in order to know whether there's bacteria or not, you have to culture it. Uh, so uh, the culture that they use is over here. It's a green uh, culture. So make sure you know what kind of culture uh, that grow for, bacteria, for mycobacterium because that's going to be on step one also. So know it well. All right, let's go to the next slide. So this is a quick test. I know Kato, you probably don't know, but Hip, you know this one? Hey. <laughs> we saw it. So okay, let's go to the next one. It's fine. Because I, I learned this, I learned it this week. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So this, you know, like this a little thing that they don't test a lot, but you just have to know. Uh, so this is copied from first eight. Uh, so it's tell you exactly the mycobacterium is by uh, Lowenstein, Jensen, or Ager. It's a it's a kind of like the greenish um, agar. All right, let's go next one. I'm gonna fly through this because um, it's all medical knowledge. So, all right, so active TB. Uh, if you want to go through the treatment quickly, huh? You want to go through the treatments? Okay, so for the active TB, right? For the initial treatment. Like in in general, the TB in general is it, it requires a combination. 
treatment because the TB is very, very uh, resistant because of the uh, uh, the capsule and they uh, can uh, evolve from different strain. So in general, they have uh, a combined treatment. So uh, let's have about a um, read, read about slide right here. The active TB require uh, the uh, four drugs. Um, so Rathambin, right? Rathambin and uh, isonazid. <laughs> Okay. So let, let me say this this one because it's hard to say. Uh, so the, the standard treatment is right. We call it right because, you know, it's just easier to say. I don't know if people <laughs> want to use the same treatment, but uh, rifampin uh, is the one drug and the iso, uh, isonazid. Uh, then we have the pyrazinamide and the ethamputol. Uh, so that's the four drugs um, that they use. So they just cause right this is faster. Um, so usually, it, the duration is determined by the site of the disease, uh, but sometimes can last from you know four months, six months to nine months. Uh, so this is a little bit more uh, you know, specific later. So I don't want to uh, go in, into it because uh, it's going to take time. Uh, but for latent TB, uh, you can treat you can treat with um, a combination of one drug or two drugs. The only one drug that you can use um, by itself is iso uh, the isoanazid. I'm sorry, I can't say that. Sometimes it's just hard. I saw it. Uh, so you use it for six to nine months. Uh, you, you do not use rifampin by itself because it can cause a resistance. So that's why people like uh, I saw it with rifampin uh, for four months. And uh, if you want to use by shorten um, shorten duration, you have to do the I saw it with the uh, rifampin uh, for three months. And this one you have to be observed directly, which means that you have to go into the hospital and you have to take the pill right on the spot. Okay, you go to the next one. Okay, so this is mainly for step one uh, knowledge. Um, so, uh, you know, I can go through it quickly. So can you go back uh, for rifampin? If you want to go back for me? Okay, rifampin, you have to remember the four R's. Uh, so is it E? No. Yeah, that one. So, uh, so it's, remember the four R's. So it's basically the only thing you need to know about TB is know the size effect of these drugs, okay? So they don't usually ask you about like TB a lot because it's very simple. Uh, you know, you show a right upper quadrant uh, like kind of cavitary lesion that you know is TB, but they ask you a lot about the side effect for the drugs. So you need to know all this. Um, did you take step one yet? Uh, uh, did you take step one yet or no? Uh, next summer. Next summer, okay. So this this will also be good for you to uh, kind of review, right? So rifampin is basically is a RNA polymerase inhibitors, uh, and it can ram up the cytochrome P450, and uh, so it acts with a lot of drugs. Uh, so that's why you have to pay attention to this, uh, and then also cause a red and orange uh, body fluid. Uh, I don't know if people know that, but uh, I actually took this drug before, and it turned your your pee and you know your um, basically even when you cry, your tears turn turn orange too. It's kind of funny. And then, but uh, you cannot use it by itself because it can cause a resistance very quickly. So that's why they tend to not use uh, by itself. Um, so uh, let's go to the next one. So uh, isonazid. Uh, so this one is the mnemonics for it is the INH. Uh, so uh, the um, abbreviation is INH. Uh, so sometimes you just Remember it, so eyes injures neurons and hepatocytes, so it can cause uh, peripheral neuropathy and cytoplastic anemia by causing B6 deficiency. Um, so just remember that, so neurons and also hepatocytes. Uh, a lot of these drugs can cause hepatotoxicity, I mean that it's toxic to the liver, uh, but INH is the only one that can cause uh, peripheral neuropathy uh, by vitamin B6. Um, so the next drug is uh, Pyrazinamide. Uh, so this one is not a lot of people know why it works. They just use it and, and it worked. Uh, but the side effect is uh, they call hyperuricemia. Uh, so the increase in chance of uh, getting gout and also call liver toxicity also. Uh, uh, and also uh, ethambutol. Uh, so I call it uh, eye because it's mainly affect the eye. So just a little trick to remember. If the person is on uh, um, you know, TB uh, treatment, and they start to have problem with the eyes. Definitely, the ethambutol is the uh, is the culprit for that one. Okay, all right. Next slide. All right. So this one I give it to Kato because uh, TB or Halal has a lot of uh, public health. Um, you know, um, 
So anyone who came to the U.S. had to like do streaming, like health streaming, and TV in one of those components. Um, so as um, so usually people just do one step with me, so they just do like the skin test. That's no time, but like for like medical, like whoever work in the healthcare related field, like. Doc, medical student, doctor, nurse have to go two step BPD to confirm it to make sure that uh, you don't TB. And if the test comes back positive, you have to go buy an, a clear chest X ray to prove that you don't have TB or you're clear from TB, otherwise, you would not be able to um, be attacked or like, return to work. So, so, for infection control of the public health, so um, first step would be like, you know, if you detect a TBK reported, reported to like uh, your state health department. And um, so the second is like once the person identifies their state, like or the hospital group like protect close contact patient, for example, like family member, wife, husband from like contracting the, the, the TB from a contagious patient. And then they also like identify who are hybrid proper like for the population with latent TB, they have to identify who are at the risk for progression from latent to contagious. And um and doing like course of treatment. And the, the last one would be the reduced rising burden TB from recent transmission transmission by identifying the setting, like what environment would foster Foster the development of TB in the latent patient, and they're gonna they're gonna like apply the measurement to prevent it. So, yes. So, anyone have any question in this part? It's very, very straightforward. So. All right. Uh, so I think that will conclude our lecture about TB. So now I'm gonna have some feedback, and also uh, I'm gonna have some from uh, uh, present the case. Okay, so we have the... Um, The yin three, right? Uh, right. Yeah. The so, uh, please show the screen. Yeah. Um, you have the uh, screen. I have the screen. Yeah. Okay. You have because I cannot share the screen. Okay. So please. You can share the screen. Uh, I cannot. Oh, okay. All right. Let me go to the slide first. Because there are around 15 slides, and I think it better I will um, <coughs> talk some slides because Tao is uh, du on duty now, mm -hmm. so I will do a stick of her. Okay. And uh, maybe I just talk about uh, yeah. some some slide in summary. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I think that when I, I talk about the case presentation, I didn't tell uh, people you know uh, exactly what I want. So I just want a student in Vietnam to basically understand um, if a patient comes in what kind of symptoms, what you know, like uh, just a, base, uh, a a story, a quick story. I don't want you know like a detailed story with all the labs into it. You know, it's kind of like you go to a relative, right, and then um, that person say, oh, I have. Uh, TB, you know, so what happens to that person? So that's the, the level that I want only. Uh, I don't want really detailed things. Yes. Okay. Did you, you, you understand what I mean? Uh, yeah, uh, that you mean that I just tell about the story of the patient? Yep. Yes. The patient. Like, for example, like, you know, if someone in your family has TB, you know, what happened? What did they, yes. what kind of symptom they have when, when they go to the yeah. hospital? Like what happened there, you know? Uh, yeah. Uh, so I um uh for example in this years we have a twenty case uh TB show in our hospital. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. And most of yes, and most of them may a lounge, and some of them a meningitis wow. or other organization, uh, other organs. And uh, on the app, I said that uh, it's a sensitivity on the case, maybe more than eighty percent case of TB. But mm -hmm. in uh, uh, in this year, uh, with twenty case of with TB, we have no uh, positive TB. Wow. I at least there. Okay. Yeah, and um, I, I I just talk the this case. Mm -hmm. Uh, baby girl, mm -hmm. ten month, ten month only. Mm -hmm. She start with the cough and fever, and uh, maybe ten days ago, and she was admitted into a district hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that hospital, she was diagnosed with a pneumonia, and she. Uh, were taken medicine with the uh, cephalos for the second generation for five days. After that, she didn't improve, and she were taken a uh, check it right with uh, a pleural effusion. So that way, she were transferred to our hospital, mm -hmm. and uh, some tests uh, were done. And at the first time, uh, we just uh, diagnosed the that pneumonia with the fluoral effusion, and she treated with uh, superfluorine for two days. And after that, we do the ah ah. This này nói sao nhỉ? Dạ, tập dịch màng phổi nói sao chị quên mất rồi. Uh, and we get some fluid from the fluid yeah. yeah. uh, with the uh, the result of the test is uh, uh, only IDI uh, positive with a level of uh, with other um, uh, zinc plus or PCR. Or uh, um, in Jensen, uh, yeah, test uh, because uh, because in uh, clinical daily, uh, most of them uh, with the clinical symptom, but uh, only uh, about fifty percent uh, have a positive with PCR or zinc exposed, and uh, as I said that. In uh, this year, we have no uh, case with positive IFP, <coughs> and uh, normally we have to get a consultant with the doctor from the uh, lunch and TB hospital mm -hmm. to come with us and give some content. Yeah. But we have to combine the uh, the the treatment with the TB closet and the. Uh, pneumonia at the same time. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So yeah, and we, uh, we do the same thing here too. We have the consult uh, the uh, the lungs and also the ID, uh, which is infectious disease uh, specialist. Uh, yes, because uh, in our hospital we have um, the 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 uh, infectious disease department, but uh. On the, the TBDC will be transferred to the lunch and TB hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, nowadays, there are no pediatrician in the uh, TB and lung hospital. So on uh, the acute phase of the DC, we uh, have to treat the patient with TB with the acute uh, phase in our hospital. When the the children uh, are stable, I will transfer the children with TB uh, to the, uh, the lung and TB hospital. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing the the story. So I just want to have a couple of you know feedback um, for you. Uh, so this is all to improve English, right? So I want people to you know uh, improve in their English. Uh, so the first thing that I hear a lot of people say is uh, diagnosed. Uh, so the word is diagnosis is uh, announced. 
and if you say that the patient is diagnosed uh, with the ED at the end, you don't have to say diagnose it. Diagnosed. Yeah, diagnosed, exactly. So you don't say the patient is diagnosis with. So you say the yeah. diagnosed with. Mm. Okay, so diagnosis is a noun. So that's, that's one. Uh, and then I, I know what you mean by um, when someone uh, put a needle into the back, it's a thoracentesis, right? When they tap the, the, the fluid in the lungs, it's called thoracentesis. Right? You know what I mean, right? I think it's this. She froze. Okay. Um, and then the, the last thing is infectious disease. Um, it basically, is that we call it ID uh, over here. All right. Uh, thank you, Dietrich, for uh, sharing the, uh, the, you know, the case uh, with us. So that's why I just want uh, to get some more feedback. Pardon? Hello, Dietrich, can you hear us? I think it's the uh, connections. Okay, so I want to get some feedback about uh, the class. Uh, so I have a lot of people here, a lot more than last time. So I want to see how many people understand, how much you guys understand. So let's go one by one. All right. Uh, Đức Tong, how much do you understand? Hello? All right. Let's, let's go uh, anyone. So let, let's, let's talk. You know, let's say, uh, let's say Vietnamese. Okay. Nãy giờ học gần một tiếng rưỡi, mấy bạn hiểu được bao nhiêu? Em thì trên 70%. Wow, okay, that's good. Okay, còn mấy bạn khác thì sao? We have a lot of people here. Um, Nhạc Tiến, Phi, Khánh Linh. Come on, guys. I'm, I'm, you know, bây giờ mình nói tiếng Việt ha, không phải nói tiếng Anh nữa. Yeah, em mới. Mến đi ha, mến. Em mới vào nên là em chưa có, em chỉ vào để xem cái đoạn sau à. Okay, so how about mến? Uh, uh, yeah. Em thì là... chắc là em phải hiểu được đến 80 đến 90 phần trăm, bởi vì okay. là em yeah. học cái phần lý thuyết của cái này rồi. Oh, okay. Nhưng mà em thấy phần uh, terminology ấy, mình mm. học hơi kéo dài thời gian, còn cái phần sau ấy, yeah. kiến thức khá là hay, chẳng hạn như phần pathophysiology ấy, phần đấy em thấy khá hay nhưng mà mọi người lại skip nó đi. Yeah, tại vì uh, anh thấy uh, nãy giờ học nhiều mà chẳng có ai hỏi gì hết trơn, cho nên không biết là mọi người có hiểu hay không là không hiểu. Không, thực ra là em hiểu nên em mới không hỏi, còn nếu em không hiểu thì em sẽ hỏi. Okay. Còn nếu không biết mọi người thế nào. Yeah. Còn mấy bạn khác, tại vì uh, anh đáng lại còn thêm một cái slide nữa, đáng lại là uh, có câu hỏi, giống như là step one uh, câu hỏi, uh, nhưng mà bây giờ không biết là có nên có nên hỏi không nữa, tại vì giờ thời gian nó quá dài rồi. Dạ. Yeah. Dạ. Yeah. Yeah. Ok, còn mấy bạn kia thì sao? Mấy bạn... Ok, còn mấy bạn kia? Yeah, bạn nào vậy? Uh, you uh, you use a raise hands functions? Uh, you... Yeah, ok, Dũng. Dũng, Dũng mới Dũng. My name is Dũng. Yeah. Ok, Dũng. Uh, ok, yeah. can you uh, introduce yourself quickly? Um, my name is Dũng. I'm a mm. graduate. I'm a doctor. <laughs> Okay, yeah. you're a doctor. So Vietnam. great, we have yeah, doctor. I'm, yeah. I'm doctor in Vietnam. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, so, how much do you understand? Uh, about uh, ninety. Okay. <laughs> That's it. Yes. That's great. Yes. All right. Um, and then I think Tung An, right? Tung An. Uh, yeah, I am here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so how? Uh, I, yeah. I can understand. Um, Maybe for 80%, I, mm -hmm. I guess that because some professional knowledge, I because mm -hmm. I haven't studied that yet, so that's why I'm just a first okay. year student. So it's quite hard for me to understand that. Okay, so now- Where can I understand English? Yeah. 
So now the, the question is, you know, I want to understand like how, which kind of class do you guys want? Uh, you want the basic Vietnamese, the, the basic English or you want the more advanced? Because right now it's really hard. I don't want to, like, I don't know which way to go, you know, because I don't want to make it too basic and uh, people will get bored. Um, and sometimes if I make it too hard, people don't, can't follow, so. Em nghĩ là ớt ra lên một tí nữa. Hả? Em nghĩ là nâng cao lên một tí nữa. You want, okay, you want the hard stuff, okay. Okay. All right. All right, so, you know, why why don't we go to some questions? Because these, these are questions for Kato and uh, also for um, uh, Hip. Because these are the questions for step one question level. They don't even see the question yet. I, I create the question, so. I don't see it. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Uh oh, crap. Mm. Let me share my screen. Hey, let my rabbi. Let my ala do that or won't do that. All right, so we're going to do some questions. Okay. All right, so let's do some questions. Um, so I'm going to give you about two minutes to read the questions, because that's all you have during step one. B, you have uh, questions or...? Okay. These are all the information that I presented during, you know, in the um, lecture. So you should be able to answer this question just based on the lectures. So. All right, let's 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 break it down. We want to give it a try. There's no right or wrong here, okay? I mean, you know, I right. practice. All right, hip. You want to give it a try? Yeah. So, uh, tell me first, first what exactly I, happened. So first, I just uh, read a question first. What is the mechanism of action of growth? Is she she taking? Okay. What does she? What do you think that she has? Yeah, uh, some side effect from uh, drug. Yeah, what kind of drugs? Uh, rifampin. Exactly. How do you how do you come to rifampin? Be uh, because you say uh, the body is orange. <laughs> That's a key. What's the other yeah. side effects that they describe in the in the in this um in this uh, stem? Why does she get pregnant? If you, if you take if you take in conscious after pills, why does she get pregnant? Right? You should be pregnant if you take in, you know, pills. But you know, you're mm -hmm. right. So rifampin is the one that causes the, the tears to be orange. Hey, you wanna give it a try? Or I absolutely have no idea. I know it's a, a question of okay. answer it a, okay. but I don't understand the mechanism of the sure. rock yet. But, so, okay. I mean, I can answer it, but like, I... Who, who raised their hand? I think, I think, um, Fee, did you raise your hand? Sorry, it was an accident. <laughs> I thought you know. No, I have no idea what's going on with her. Okay, you really don't know what's going on with her. So, do you see the orange color of the tears? Yeah, I see, okay. but I, I don't understand why she has orange tears. So, for, so, remember the lectures that we gave you, the four drugs, uh, ripe? So, one of yeah. the drugs 
one of the drugs uh, cause you know body fluid to turn orange, which include um, ur urines and also tears to turn yellow. Uh, not yellow, but uh, orange colors. So next time, if your patient say that their pee is orange, make sure that they they are on this medication. They're not on this medication. So the medication we're talking about is right, is rifampin. Uh, so that's why remember the four R's. Rifampin means red or orange, uh, tears, and also uh, pees. Um, so that's why the 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 question they ask about is rifampin. So, but the question is, how do you? What is the mechanism of rifampin? Remember the other R uh, for rifampin? RNA polymerase inhibitor. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So that's so why. A? Yeah, so that was A. So that's why you need to know a little bit of mnemonics, right, to, to answer these questions. Um, so R, basically, rifampin is RNA inhibitors. Okay, so that's why this question is, is sort of easy because it gives you the, uh, the drugs already by having the orange colors already. Um, Hip, did you get that one? Did what? Did you get the answer? I, I say A, right? Yeah, you say A. Okay, good. All right, yeah. let's go to the next one. So that's why I just put this for the key to solve this one is basically the side effects of, uh, of the, the drugs, the four drugs, which is uh, RIPE. Uh, so rifampin is stand for RNA polymerase. It's ran up the cytochrome P450. That's why they interact with a lot of drugs. Uh, basically, you have someone taking uh, contraceptive pills, uh, you have to increase the dose. Um, and uh, except, especially people on blood thinner, if they're taking rifampin, you have to adjust the medication so that they not, uh, they are, are either not too high or too low, okay? Uh, and also the side effect is the red and orange body fluid. And the last one is a rapid resistance. So that's why you cannot use this drug by itself the only drug that you can use it by itself is the uh, isonazid. Um, so just remember the other uh, two side, the side effect for the other four medications. So uh, the next one, is isonazid, is in, injure the neurons and hepatocyte. Uh, and uh, pyrazinamide is uh, gout and also hepatotoxicity. Uh, ethambutol, or we call ethambutol, is to affect the visions, basically. All right, so let's go to this one. So uh, two minutes. Or well, one minute. This one should be easy because you know I just gave you the answer the, the, the lies before. So this one I'm not going to ask uh, Hip because he probably knows. Uh, anyone else want to give a try? Even you, even you, Kato, you should know now. A, right? The tambumun is no. affect the vision of the patient. Yeah, it, it can be tall. The so yeah, so just remember the the, the the e at the beginning. Just remember, just instead of saying it can be tall, you say I can be tall. So it affect the eye. So that's the trick. Yeah. <coughs> oh, okay, I can be tall. Yeah, I can be tall. So it affect the eye, but you know. I did, the real name is Ethambutol, but you know, you just say Ethambutol just to make sure you remember that the side effect is affect the eyes. Hey guys, these drugs are actually used in real life. Uh, so there's some patient will come in with this uh, complaint. So it is not just for the test. It does happen in real life. All right, go to the next one. All right, this one, oh, crap. <laughs> this one is really hard, but I, I'll give you the answer. But, you know, any, anyone, on this, anyone explain to me why, why A is the answer? This one is actually, a, you know, a real life experience. Uh, I have this this patient, one of this patient before. Uh, 
Okay, for, first of all, when you look at the checks array, what do you think? So the key for any exam is if they give you a check x ray, read the check x ray first. What do you think going on in that check x ray? Anyone want to give it a try? Some uh, some fat roses on the right side. So there's some junks on the right side, right? But what's the location? Up below. The up right below. up below, okay. And do you see anything? You, I know you see junks, but like, do you see anything there that tell you a little bit, you know, you're concerned about? Uh, some mass, right? There are wide mass, like two, two wide mass, and several wide mass. Oh, uh, shit. A what? Mass? Mm -hmm. No, so the only reason I'm giving you that x-ray is at the right upper lobe. Something up there, we don't know what it is, but you just know that it's the right upper lobe. And then look at the, read, read the question stem. What, do, what else did they give you? Uh, they give us uh, past medical history. Exactly. Rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, so. so what are the symptoms that she has? Weight loss. Uh, nice whip. Yeah. So this is what this is when I say pattern recognition comes in. So you have to understand. So if you get, if they give you a patient with basically a right upper lobe, um, you know, infiltrations, and then we have weight loss, and then nice wet, it's definitely spell out TB. And the other thing that helps you think that she have TB. Also, she works a prison guard. So why why do people work in a prison guard have a higher chance of Getting TB. Um, because it is uh, uh, very uh, contagious. The TB is very contagious and it's very, very easy to transmit from uh, person to person. So, not here, but in, in other countries, uh, a lot of people, you know, the, your prisoners, they have TB, a lot of them. Uh, I think uh, TB can develop easily uh, in this environment mm -hmm. because it cannot survive under the sunlight. So, <laughs> yeah. no, just people with uh, you know uh, people that work at the prison guard, like people in prison, usually have TB. Some of them usually have TB, and they just transmit it. It's an enclosed you know area, so someone had it, and then it just keep going around. Okay, so now go back to the question. So you know the patient has TB. And what else does she have? She has rheumatoid arthritis, right? Uh -huh. So what is going on between her rheumatoid arthritis and her TB? Why do we care that if she has TB and she has rheumatoid arthritis? And why do we have to discontinue the, the medications? Also, is it a viral gas? But isn't rheumatoid arthritis an autoimmune disease? So to treat it, you kind of use like kind of some kind of like suppresses autoimmune drugs. Mm -hmm. It's just a viral gas. Well, you get in there, but you know the that's why I asked him earlier, right? Like, what what about that uh, interferon gamma? Mm. Ooh, I need to so, read it again. Okay, so this this you have to imprint in your head. Um, so this is one of the things that always test step one all the all every single time so they, they test this question because it is so it's hard but it's it's predictable so if you learn this you will get the questions right um, so the reason why is basically you have to recognize that first thing is that um, pattern recognitions you know like chest x-ray with right upper uh, lobe cavity weight loss, uh, you know, for nice wet and work at the prison guard, then patient have a TB. Uh, so the reason why, well, before you started a uh, patient uh, on a um, rheumatoid arthritis on a TNF-alpha inhibitors, you have to screen them for TB because you don't want uh, to reactivate if they have TB. The reason why is um, the, the tenacep, which is a TNF-alpha, uh, is an alpha inhibitor. So if it inhibits the TNF-alpha, uh, then people with TB 
they rely on that TNF alpha in order to enclose to enclose that granuloma. So if they don't have that TNF alpha, the granuloma will kind of burst open and it causes them to have disseminated TB. So that's why if a patient comes in with, uh, if they have rheumatoid arthritis or any source of uh, disease that require you to put them on a um, basically a TNF alpha blocker, you have to screen them for uh, TB first before you put them on that drugs. So this is a question they always ask on uh, step one. So I just want to bring it to attention, especially you for hip and kato. Always remember this. They test you that all the time. You understand now? Yeah. This is mainly just yeah. for you two. Yeah. Right? Okay. So basically TB required TNF alpha to maintain that granuloma. So you cannot block that. Yeah, because like, uh, I, did, I, I did not know that drug is uh, belong to the uh, TNF alpha inhibitor. Yeah, you have no. to remember Eternisup is a uh, TNF alpha. That's the one drug you need to remember that the one the TNF alpha inhibitors. Okay. Anyone have any question about this one? Maybe not. It's just for step one. So. All right. So this one, the last one, is pretty easy. This one probably you don't know. You probably never seen it before. So. This basically asks you for what medication you give to someone to prophylactically prevent them from having TB. Let's say if your friend had TB, right? And then, you know, you, you stay in the same house with that person. So if you go to the doctor, what medication do they give to you to prevent you from getting TB? So we have four drugs when you talk about TB, right? So you have 25% chance of getting right. So the right. So remember, so what's the first thing about rifampin? I told you it's resistance. You cannot use it by itself, yeah. right? So that one is out. So now you have, you know, uh, IPE. So what, what did I tell you about the I, which is ithembutol? That's our vision change. Yeah, right? cause your vision change have nothing to do with prophylactic, right? So now you're down to I and P. What, what did I tell you about P? Nothing. There's no mechanism to it. I isolate it. Exactly. So I is the only thing that you can use by itself. So that's why people use it for prophylactic. Um, so. Remember the side effect of I? Yeah. What's the side effect? A new neuron and a liver. Exactly. So neuron and liver. So which one of those cause liver problem? Hepatotoxicity. See, so this is a lot of tricks. So sometimes you don't have to know the answer. You just have to eliminate the other choices. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, isonazid is the abbreviation is INH. Um, actually, people use that abbreviation. So you just remember it's injury to the neurons and the hepatocytes, okay? And sometimes they will ask you about the injury of the neurons. Basically, it's a peripheral neuro neuropathy. Um, so it causes vitamin B6 deficiency. So that's why they give vitamin, vitamin B6 supplements uh, when people are on this drugs also. All right, so I think that's it. Um, so this question is mainly just for step one. So I want to, you know, Kato and Hip uh, get used to it. Um, so it's good for you, Kato, to get used to, you know, how they ask you questions about step one questions. Um, so you don't have to know everything. You just know, have to know what they test so that you can focus on it. So TB is one of those things that you focus on the drug reactions. Because uh, they're not going to test you a lot about the disease, but they test a lot about the drug reaction because it used so widely and there's so many of them with reactions. Okay. All right. I mean, thank you everyone for uh, coming today. Uh, it's, it's fun. Uh, next, next week, we can try to do something a little bit more similar. 
Uh, we're going to have someone present a case, um, the same thing in the beginning. So I want you to present a case like, as if, you know, your friend or your family has it, uh, what kind of symptom they have when they go to the hospital, what kind of uh, tests that they run, and, you know, like what treatment did they receive. Uh, and then it's just like a, a natural talk, you know, you don't have to, to do a, a PowerPoint or anything. Um, just basically allow people to practice the English. Um, so that's the whole point. Okay, so I want people to practice a little bit more uh, with the English. Um, so we're gonna do this next next week again. It's it's fun. Um, so anyone have any feedback? You can speak in English or Vietnamese. It's fine. I can have a question. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, in uh, question one, I uh, mm -hmm. don't understand why he have a tear or they just say uh, uh, she have a uh, she come from Vietnam and mm -hmm. she you she they don't ask uh they don't ask uh she you a blood for ITTB so uh, so we, uh, we don't have a uh, uh, detail will say about the uh, TB. Yeah, so, you know, in the exam, they don't tell you exactly what the patient has. They just give you a little clues here and there. Uh, so you see someone uh, who's an immigrant, especially Vietnamese immigrants, um, yeah. which often have TB. So that's why they tell you that they gave you that Vietnamese. It could have been somebody else. It could have been, you know, from uh, Peru or from a different countries. Uh, but the, 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 the key factor is the orange color of the tears. Not many medications give you a tear with orange color, a body with fluid. Um, so the, the number one drug that you have to think about is rifampin. Yeah. yeah, so that's the only thing. So when you take the exam, you have to take the clue and you have to think about um, these clues. Um, so if uh, immigrants uh, come in with sort of, you know, um, orange colors, uh, and also urine, and you think about uh, TB, okay? Yeah. Yeah. It's very difficult. <laughs> yeah, so that's why the exam is difficult because you have to pick up these clues. They don't give you a lot. Yeah. 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 All right, any other questions? So I, I want this class to be for you guys. So you, I want you guys to you know, contribute and think of how to improve the class. Like, how do you want this class? How do you think the class will help you? Um, so unless you tell us, I don't know what to do. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cái medical terminology nó hơi dài ấy, thì ừ. nếu mà mình có một cái group đó mà mình có thể post được cái gọi là cho các bạn biết trước là các cái term, các cái medical terminology đó trước ấy, thì có thể là lúc mà mình chỉ tập với việc phát âm thôi thì nó sẽ giảm uh -huh. thời gian hơn. Yeah. Ok. Yeah, anh nghĩ cái đó là uh, good idea. Ok, uh, Min, you have something to say? Mm. Em nghĩ rằng là em nghĩ rằng là ấy, ngoài đưa chủ đề mà mình sẽ bàn luận trong buổi thì mình nên đưa cả objective tức là mục tiêu của cái buổi thảo luận đi trước. Chẳng hạn như buổi này sẽ học về thuốc rồi là linh tinh để mọi người có thể okay. chuẩn bị kiến thức từ trước thì sẽ nói được nhiều hơn. Thực ra thì em cũng muốn nói nhưng mà có vài thứ đâu rồi em cũng quên nên cũng chẳng biết nói gì nữa. Ok. Yeah, được đó. À, nghĩ nó đúng rồi đó. À, cho cái objectives. Ok. Đấy. Còn còn cái gì nữa không? <cười> ừ. Nếu như mà các bạn mà muốn present một cái case, muốn trình bày một cái case thì có thể có thể được không? Ok. Yeah. Ok, so lần tới là mình sẽ đưa một cái topic trước đúng không? Rồi mình mấy cái medical terminologies mình sẽ post lên trước để cho các bạn biết. Xong rồi á, uh, các bài học á, thì nó sẽ thi nhiều về medical term, uh, medical knowledge hơn. Right? Đúng không? À, với em có ý nữa là yeah. uh, đối với việc mà mình present cái case á, thì mm. là mình nên anh nên yêu cầu các bạn là làm theo một cái uh, kiểu giống như cái clinical record. Nó, ý là nó có thứ tự thì mình sẽ dễ nghe hơn. 
Ok, um, đáng lẽ là cái bạn mà present á, là bạn có gửi cái case presentation á, là à, có chỉnh sửa rồi nhưng mà bữa nay bạn trực, bị trực cho nên là bạn không có present được nhưng mà bạn, có, bạn đó có cái PowerPoint à, mình nghĩ mình sẽ post ở trên cái uh, VMD cái cách mà present một cái case giống như là à, có, có nó có cái uh, structure hơn à, thì có, có thể nó phải dễ hơn nhưng mà mình nghĩ là có một cái case presentation á, thì cái, cái buổi học nó thú vị hơn một chút Ok sau so, cái buổi tới là mình sẽ để kiếm một cái topic um, cũng có một cái case presentation nếu mà bạn nào muốn làm case presentation muốn practice uh, English ấy, thì uh, thì cứ cứ inbox mình um, rồi mình sẽ post ở trên uh, mạng ấy, là cái medical terminology trước um, xong đó rồi sẽ cho một cái objectives um, cho nên các bạn sẽ ôn cái đó sau lúc mình học ấy, có vẻ có, có vẻ vui hơn và có vẻ là uh, focus hơn ok còn cái gì khác nữa không mà các bạn muốn nói bằng tiếng Anh, tiếng Việt hay là sao hay là nói cả hai? Both. Both, ok. Yeah. Ok. Nhưng mà sao thấy ở đây á, thì thấy chỉ có uh, 4-5 bạn thôi còn mấy bạn kia không thấy nói không thấy nói gì nên không, cũng không biết được là mấy bạn tiếng Anh có hiểu được hay không. Ở đây có bạn nào là có một cái group học chung không? Hay là chỉ học ở nhà riêng vậy? Ok à, Bây giờ bên đây cũng là gần 11 giờ rồi à, Cho nên uh, cảm ơn các bạn uh, đã tới hôm nay Uh, thank you uh, Hip and thank you um, Kato. I know it's really late um, and you know I really appreciate both your help. So uh, next next week uh, we can think about another topic. All right, we're gonna do a little bit quicker, uh, less medical terminology and more medical knowledge. Okay. Thank you. All right. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.